So, Steve, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. How are you doing? What have you been up to? What have you been working on more recently? Uh, well, I'm working on, I guess, issue two of uh, Bonesa, the comic that the 77 chose to um, find an interest in, in terms of uh, some scripts I wrote in a book. Uh, so I'm showing Jimmy uh, a book called The Shared Man Conspiracy, which was um, a kind of a, a sort of fictional novel, mm -hmm. but um, it, it's telling the stories I couldn't tell in this one, yeah. the mighty one, My Life Inside, uh, basically 2000 AD, where I told the, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, hmm. despite what Pat Mills says. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry. I have to say that. Um, so there we go. Um, and uh, at the moment, to answer your question, I'm kind of figuring whether I should do a blazer annual, because annuals seem to be hot guys, or issue three. And I'm, I'm really torn between the two. Um, I'm very much torn between the two. And I need to talk to my publisher, Ben. Conan Cullis at 77 and that stuff and see what he he and his team of directors feel is the way to go. Mm, absolutely. So it's an exciting time for you. And I guess the next question to follow up from that, because uh, obviously you've done a lot of great work in your career and you've uh, you've achieved a lot of things, is how do you define success as an artist and a creative, but also as a person? Well... For an artist, I would say um, success is with each drawing they finish and they feel they're happy with. Um, then it becomes a question of commercial success. Are they trying to make money out of that? Or do they want to showcase their work for no money, <laughs> uh, which is often the case. Um, so either way, uh, it's up to the artist to define the success. Um, but we all know that in monetary terms, success is when an artist uh, can draw a script written by themselves that becomes a very big seller, or they hint, link up with someone like Alan Moore. Uh, so Dave Gibbons and Alan Moore became created a six successful product so the answer to your question i guess is is quite many fold but uh it's up to the individual i guess mm, mm, absolutely and, and do you feel like you have achieved everything that you set out to do obviously as as people that are observing your work to me I think you've done incredible stuff and obviously Graham does as well and many other people do. Uh, do you feel like you've achieved everything you want to do as an artist and a creative? Well, that's very kind of you both to say that. Um, but I would say yes, but there's still, as long as you're alive, you're creating, be mm. you seven or 70 or 17 or 700, um, I feel like a Picasso was always creating until his death and many writers and stuff. So uh, it's very much a case of until I die, I am creating yeah. as a, not me per se, but an artist might say, or even uh, anyone in, in their life is, is, is striving to, to keep on because what is the alternative <laughs> to turn your face to the wall? As John Lennon said, yeah. you, know, you can't do that. Yeah, absolutely. So constantly create. And I think that, you know, that brings me on to my next question with regards to advice for, you know, younger creatives, people that are coming up, maybe they admire your work in the same way. You know, it's a pleasure to have you, you know, sit with us, you know, and obviously there is admiration for your work. Graham's got some of your work as well uh, with, with us today to look at later. But, um, you know, what is your advice for any young person? What do you want to see from a young artist? I know this is different for you know, for everybody, what would you want to see from anybody coming up? What key skills would they need to have? Uh, I would say the first thing is not so much a skill as a passion mm. and a, a desire never to give up and just to keep on and on and on. If they believe in their work, then it will either happen or it won't. 
Um, mm. It's as simple as that, really. Um, but either way, one one way, you know, you make money. The other way, you don't. But you you have this body of work that people will appreciate. Your friends, your mm. family, people mm. in the market place, perhaps where you live in a small market town, or the other way is your work is appreciated by 500 million people in America. Yeah. You know, it's, that's the way the cookie crumbles. But other way, just keep going, guys. Keep going. Keep drawing. Don't never, ever give up. Mm, absolutely, Stephen. That's a wonderful message. And I think one of the things that I'd like to, you know, sort of ask you as well, if you're okay talking about it, is, you know, a lot of people we work with, uh, we they struggle with their own you know sense of self belief. Maybe they're dealing with a lot of mental health issues, a little bit of anxiety, some depression. So they might be very creative. They might have achieved you know some great art, but they they they, they say oh, I'm never going to be like Steve. I'm never going to have that you know that platform. And I wonder if you've ever been through any challenging times, a crisis of confidence, or anything like that, and how you were able to overcome that in your career. Yes, I, I, I hear what you're saying. And for those people, what's helpful to them is uh, a helping hand. And mm. by that, I would define it as an editor or an agent or a friend or a, a professional in the industry who would help them or you get on. Mm. Um, for myself, uh, I didn't really have that kind of crisis. <laughs> Mm. I'm not that kind, but I do understand entirely that the, the way one might see it as a mountain. And mm. I, I would say, you know, that that you can you can do that mountain. You can ain't no mountain high enough. Come on. Absolutely. You just need the support. It's all about support. So look for support. And by that I mean fellow profess uh, people who are aspiring, not aspiring, but artists writers, find a group, take the comfort from them, go to a convention, build your confidence, you know, learn from a professional perhaps who's telling you which pen to draw with and stuff. And sooner or later, I, 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 you know, it's true as tomorrow will be day, you will find happiness. Outside of work, outside of drawing and creativity, outside of comic books, graphic novels, uh, what is it that inspires you? So think family, friends, music, anything, you know, anything outside of, of what, what is for you work? Okay, good question. For myself, um, as an editor, um, when I was an editor, uh, pretty much uh, I was inspired by what I had seen that day, the scripts from Alan Moore, the art from Dave Gibbons, Brian Bolland, working with my friends on the team at 2000 AD, I would bring that joy home, all that anxiety, to be fair, or that kind of doubt. So each day has inspiration and it has doubt. And my, my message is, uh, you know, next day, wake up and just go back and do it again. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think that, you know, talking about motivations, you know, I'm going to bring in Graham now, who's been a big motivation to me since we started doing this type of interviews. Uh, Graham, have you got any questions you'd like to ask Steve at this point? Because it's, it's, it's been really cool chatting to him and sitting down and talking <laughs> through his inspirations. If you wouldn't mind, would you mind if I asked uh, some questions about your career? By all means. Going, going back a few years. Um, so one of the first questions I want to ask um, not a lot of people might expect me to ask, ask this, or about this anyway, but you worked on a comic book or a, a magazine, as it was, uh, in the 90s that has got a massive cult following, but you don't really hear much of nowadays, and that was Sonic the Comic. Ah, oh, well, I need to be fair here. Right. Uh, okay, so Sonic was a, a, a TV character, yeah. Yeah. And um, the, the license to do a comic was offered mm. out to various publishers. IPC um, thought they had it, um, but the company I worked for, Egmont, won it. Um, and I had nothing to do with that. Oh, really? <laughs> Fair yeah. enough. This is my, your, my, you learn something new every day, you see? <laughs> no, 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 hold on. 
Yeah. I must say that a former sub editor in 2000, AG, Richard Burton, was a massive, massive games fan. Mm. Yeah. And when we when we won the uh, the uh, the license to do a Sonic the Comic comic kind of thing, um, I said to the publisher, "Well, the, the guy you need is not me, but Richard." And Richard um, Burton then took over and created Sonic the Comic, and he got in touch with people like Nigel Kitchen and uh, all the people who knew loads about the, the character, more than Sega, the licensors in the UK, I didn't really know. They would go to meetings and talk about Sonic, and they, they, these people at Sega wouldn't have the clue what they were talking about. <laughs> so I had to put my hand up and say, it's nothing to do with me, Graham. Ah, oh, fair enough. Um... My next question would be, um, I think you're often cited as being one of the people that got Grant Morrison's career going. Have you got anything to say about Grant Morrison? Yeah, I love Grant Morrison. Do you um, keep in touch with Grant? No, I don't. The thing is, uh, short answer, no, but then I don't keep in touch with any, only if I met him at a convention. Mm. We're talking about, to be fair, for your listeners, you know, someone in America may think this is modern. It's not. We're talking about something that happened 30 years ago, guys. Yeah. We're talking about the 1980s, to be fair. <laughs> so, um, but uh, um, I remember Grant as a very quietly spoken person, very quiet. Um, and... Um, trying to think now oh yeah i was in the 2000 dead eggy office one day and i turned my head and there he was hmm. i said to him how did you get there because we had very tight security downstairs on this 20 story office block you, know, you couldn't get in and he must have magicked himself there growing <laughs> i'm not kidding because he, yeah, I didn't get a phone call to say, oh, there's a Mr. Morrison to see you. <laughs> Shall we send him up or we'll kick him out? I never got that. <laughs> and that's what they had to do. They had to ring. I, I just turned my head to the left and Grant was there. So that's my memory of Grant. Magical. It just turned up. Softly spoken. Next thing you know, he's writing Zenith. And, and, and off he went on his career. Amazing. Mm. Um. I was also going to ask you about working with uh, people such as uh, John Wagner, Alan Grant, um, you know, people like that, you know, have got massive followings as well. You know, have you got any interesting stories or funny stories or anything like that? That, you, that you'd like to tell. That you, that you, you don't can, have to. That you can tell, yeah, of course. <laughs> you, no pressure. <laughs> well, um, John Wagner, I first met when I was... A, sub-editor on Battle Picture Weekly, which he and Pat Mills were creating. And uh, David Hunt was the editor, and David had kindly asked me to be his sub-editor. So I met John that way. Uh, he was quite quiet, taciturn, big guy, talented, obviously. And then um, it turned out we decided we needed both needed somewhere to live, so we shared a flat in Camberwell. Um, and that, that's in my book, how we shared some time together in The Mighty One, that's called my book. Um, Alan Grant came into my, on my radar when uh, Kelvin Gosnell, the editor of 2000 AD, was launching uh, Star Lord. And I remember meeting Alan in the office of Star Lord. I think maybe they tried to hire Alan, instead of me as a sub-editor, but that didn't work out. Uh, eventually, though, Alan came on to 2000 AD, and he and I were the editorial team. And um, we were kind of yin and yang, you know. Um, he had very firm ideas, and I had my ideas. And through that, we kind of managed to get 2000 AD 
to a, a stable position, kind of like if I'm going to tell, talk about progs now, I'm going to say prog 150 maybe. So that so both of those, um, John was quiet, Alan was forceful. John and I used to play pool. Alan and I used to have typing competitions. So that's how I remember them both. Different characters, very different characters with different personalities mm. by the sounds of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Both Scottish, though. <laughs> absolutely. Um, so speaking about Blazer as well, obviously, you, um, congratulations on your recent Kickstarter. Thank you. I think, I think it end, was it yesterday it ended or today? I can't remember. I think I, within the last 12 hours, 24 yeah. hours, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I can't wait to see it printed. I, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, they, they talk about, in terms of music, that, that difficult second album. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but yeah. with Laser, I think the second issue is just a notch above. I think that's what comics do, that the second issue is always better than the first, and the third is better than the second. Then you hit that kind of 12th issue, and then it's, oh, God. <laughs> what now? You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, so that, I like that differential between music and, and uh, comics. I, I think comics are more fun in that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have any musical? Uh, did you grow up on any particular type of music, actually? Because a lot of our listeners and, and readers are also big music fans. So just out of curiosity, do you have uh, uh, any music that you particularly love, um, Steve? Well, I have to um, admit that I was born in 1953. So your, your, your listeners must bear with me when I talk about of course. that. Absolutely. So, okay. So the first record I think I heard was uh, uh, kind of that, all that 50s stuff, you know. But when I was 10, how lucky was I? Because I was 10 in the 1963, the Beatles broke. Oh, of course. I was just about to say that. Yeah, yeah. Beatles. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you can't, you can't. Incredible. Uh, Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So all that 60s British wave. Uh, and then I really got into the West American West Coast music in my sort of teenage years. So I'm talking about, um, I must give a heads up here though to 10 years after, but British, but in American Grateful Dead, The Doors, yeah. um, you know, Jefferson Airplane, yeah. Or, yeah, exactly, all that stuff. Simon and Garfunkel, um, uh, Quicksilver Messenger Service is good if you haven't heard them. Uh, I, but latterly now, today, uh, I tend to just go back to what I heard then. Yeah, yeah probably the, best. The classics, yeah, <laughs> the classics. Absolutely. I, I, yeah, I definitely do go back to the doors quite a lot for sure. Uh, Thank yeah, you. Got, I've got another question as well. Um, Dom, this might surprise you a little bit. Steve, could you tell us a little bit about your modeling career? Um, Oh, when I used to be an uh, action man. Well, there you go. <laughs> See, that, that does, that, that's really good, good little fact there, Greg. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So that, so how, did, how did that come about? Well, um, my, uh, when I was working on Battle Picture Weekly, um, Pat Mills was creating action in the office next door, action comic, and he came to me and he said, I, I want some guy to be action man, you know, to do daring <laughs> stunts. I said, Pat, come on. I mean, why would I want to do that? And he said, well, I'll pay you £10. I said, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> so Pat had me, and he was paying me £10. Uh, I was action man. I did, uh, I went and wrestled a boa constrictor. Wow. I did all that. I went up in a balloon. I went down the sewers. I, I drove a London bus on a skid patch. No way. Um, That's incredible. Yeah, all those action man things. I think, is that the, the question you were asking me? The model, yeah, the yeah, modeling, was... yeah, quite literally modeling career. <laughs> absolutely. That's amazing. It's also going to be interesting. Wow. That is, that is amazing. <laughs> absolutely. And you've got a copy of Blazer there as I, well. I do have a copy of Blazer here with me. 
Wow. Yeah, SG1. Yeah, Thank I, you. I actually have two copies of this. I, um, I got this one from the Kickstarter, and then I got another one in a bundle of the of the 77 as well, because I caught onto <laughs> a little bit late, and I, I caught up that way. So I got a bundle. So yeah, it's, uh, it's quite good, isn't it? It's beautiful. That is stunning. It's, it's, I, I do like how it's in the style of... Uh, you know, of an actual, well, it's not even, it's meant to be, a, it was, it was found, you know, a, a crate of these, it was, a, it was a, a lorry full of these comics from the seventies were found. Yeah. And then, you know, that's, that's the story, isn't it? That's the style. It is. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, um, it reminds me, I mean, I'm not quite old enough to have read comics in, at the time in the seventies, but it still reminds me of my childhood and reading. That's beautiful. You know, yeah. Uh, that's beautiful. This, sort, you know, this style of comic. Incredible. So, yeah, incredible. So, how how did Blazer come about? Well, the the comic you're holding in your hands just uh, was, um, I guess, um, thanks to the seventy seven publications. Uh, the stories I'd written was in this one, guys. So you can mm. the Vietnam conspiracy. So I said, yeah, go ahead. I had nothing to lose. So Ben and his fellow directors went out and found artists to draw the scripts that were in this comic, this book, sorry. Before I knew it, we had a Kickstarter and we got, well, they got £8,000 to print what you just held in your hands. Wow, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. And, um, Blaze, yeah, yeah. So that's you know, kind of a, a rambling answer to <laughs> your question. Um, there was no better intention on my part to create plays of the comic. I just read the story, the book, which is um, kind of all the stories about my life in comics I couldn't tell because it's fictional. So within, mm. anyway, read, read. <laughs> You have to read both. You have to read The Shave Man and Blazer to get the full juiciness of what the comics were like in the 70s and 80s in the UK. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we were talking earlier on as well about what's next. So you were considering either a third issue of Blazer or a, a hardcover annual of sorts. Would it yes. To, would it be hardcover? Um, you, the, you, the you, annual you're putting him... You're leading him in a direction he might not. Sorry. He might not want to go in. I'm, I'm, I am showing bias here. Um, <laughs> I do like my hardcovers, and I do have the. I, I showed you the the seventy seven annual, yeah. didn't I? Yeah. 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 The Graham Isn't wants you to do cool? a hardcover. <laughs> how much? How much did you pay for that seventy seven annual? The hardcover. Uh, I would have to check. I think an it's thirty an, pounds. An amount. I think it was thirty. It says in the in, on the inside. You know, like in in your. Uh, in your old school annual, yeah. it's like there'd be like a little corner that you can cut off, and it'd mm. say like you know two ninety nine or whatever. It's got that, but it says thirty pounds. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. Yeah, just, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure, guys. I'd have the goal to charge anyone thirty pounds for <laughs> something I did. So probably I, I, I'd be happy. I'm because you know. Oh, oh, okay, okay, guys. I would rather do Blazer issue three because on issue two, there's fantastic news about a merger in the next issue. So in issue three, I'm saying that if we ever do issue three, it will be Blazer and a horror comic called Frightful. Awesome. Oh, well, there you go. Ooh. Now I'm issue friend, three now instead. <laughs> yeah. And my friend Alan Hebden has offered me a couple of his horror stories to go in issue three. So oh, amazing! It's all up to Ben Conan Collis, my publisher, to see it, and his directors. I, I I think actually I don't want to do a Blazer annual because the seventy seven annual was kind of like hit the spot. You know, I I can't yeah. compete with that. I, I think I'd rather go in with my little supposed weekly comic, you know, coming out every year. <laughs> it, it, you know, it's 32 pages. So you either like it or you don't, you know. You, you know what it's about. It's a kind of referential you know, thing, Blazer. But uh, 
I, I, I really enjoyed writing the letters page from the perspective of a young child in the 1970s, 70s, you know, where I talk about things like um, space hoppers, you know. A child of today wouldn't know what a space hopper is. <laughs> I love a good but space us hopper. guys, well, yeah. maybe not you two, but people no, my age in our yeah. 50s. I know, about <laughs> space. I know about space hoppers, Steve, absolutely. Good fun. Good absolutely, fun. yeah. Absolutely. So, does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah we've got a bit of news yeah. there as well. Taste yeah. a bit. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Steve. That's amazing. And it's lovely to sit down with you. I, I do want to ask, I mean, Graham, have you got any more things you want to ask Steve? Because it's probably loads, isn't there? But uh, I no, mean, you go ahead. I mean, for me, one of the things, you know, I do want to ask you, you know, coming off the back of this, you know, again, with all you've achieved, there's a lot of people that have seen your work from all over the world. What would be your message to people that... Have, have, have supported you, whether they've paid, whether they've enjoyed the Kickstarter, whether they've, you know, whether they're listening to this, what will be your message to people that have supported you through your career and will continue to do so as you continue on uh, as a creative? Well, first of all, thank you very much. I'm not sure I deserve their support, but it's very welcome. Absolutely, Secondly, you do, mate. Okay. Secondly, <laughs> I'd say, you know, um spread the word comics mm. are good uh, the, the art form is, is is absolutely bang on it and uh, if you're an aspiring artist keep right aspiring if you're a writer keep aspiring and if you're a reader of comics keep buying because we need your support absolutely and that's a wonderful message to finish on um like i say just quickly the press and plugging bit where would you like people to go? Where do you want people to? What do you want people to buy at the moment? What uh, what links do you need uh, to plug? Where can people go to find out more about your work? And where do you want people? Where do you want to send people before we finish up? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I would ask anyone if they can get a booster jab, yeah. and then we would be safer. Never mind me. Protect <laughs> yourselves, guys, because this Omicron is pretty dangerous. So get jabbed and then we can all meet at a convention next year. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Absolutely. Very much looking forward to it. And thank you so much for sharing your time and your energy about your work. It's very infectious and uh, it's lovely to speak to you, Steve. Thank you so much. Thank you both of you, Graham. Thank you both of you. Good night. next year absolutely looking forward to it absolutely very much looking forward to it and thank you so much for sharing your time and your energy about your work it's very infectious and uh, it's lovely to speak to you steve thank you so much thank you both of you graham thank you both of you good night <laughs>